Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm just this is an introductory video on using Fantasy Grounds as an RPG virtual tabletop program for my players. Um, we have I have like a pool of players which uh, I would you know put a venture together and say, hey, let's play. Who wants in? And then they just say, yeah, I do, I do. And then we get together and we play online. So basically, this is an introductory video for those people really about how to use the program, just the basic usage of it. Uh, so they could start playing right away when uh, you know the adventure comes up and stuff. I want to put this on uh, for you guys just in case you're just wondering what it's all about and stuff. And again, if you're watching this from my Wargaming channel, uh, you can see all the role-playing stuff over at my role-playing channel at RPG Consortium. There's a link at the bottom. But anyways, there we go. When you finish installing the program and open it, you'll see the splash screen. First off, there's a little problem that you might run into when you first try to join a game. It will update a bunch of files for first time use and some people might run into a file error. If this happens, it's an easy fix and this has to do with the permissions for your computer. What you do is click the settings button. This will bring up the settings window. Just make sure you set up your data directory path to a different drive. In this case, I made a directory called RPG data on my E drive. Once you do that, join the game again and the file should update correctly. To join a game, simply click the Join Game button. This will bring you to your login screen. For the username, I suggest using your own name. This is important to keep using your own name as a username as it ties into your character. Next, I will give you a four-word phrase as the host address. This is the password to hook into my computer. For this example, I'm using the username Watcher and logging in directly to my computer. This is the account I use for recording videos when we feel like broadcasting it to YouTube. It takes a few seconds to connect, so we'll fast forward from here. Once you log in, the character selection window will pop up for you to select your character. In this case, we're going to select Mr. Wizard for our examples. Once this is done, you'll see your character portrait appear at the top left of your screen and you're ready to go. Let's go over some basic stuff that you will need to know. There's a few buttons on the screen, but you only use a couple of them during our gaming sessions frequently. The first button, which is the one you'll use often, is the combat tracker. This basically tracks the compact during the game, like the order of turns, as well as the damage to a PC or NPC. The second button is the party sheet. The first tab shows you the distribution of loot, which you'll probably look over once in a while. The second tab allows us to plan out marching order and camping layout without needing to pull up a full map to do it. We'll skip ahead to the dice color button. This basically allows you to set the color of your dice. It's not important in playing the game, but it's a little cute thing for you to do if you ever get bored. The other two windows to note is the modifiers and effects windows. We will be utilizing these later as we keep playing, but it's nothing important to learn right now. They're just tools to make the game flow smoother. The rest of the buttons like story, images and maps, NPCs, etc. You don't have to worry about them right now. You won't see anything in them unless it's stuff I share to you. Basically, as an adventure or campaign progresses through the storyline, you will gain more knowledge, and the more knowledge you gain, the more of these areas will be filled in so you can go back later to reference them. And that's the quick rundown of the interface. To access the character sheet, just click on your character portrait at the top left of the screen or use the PC button. Your character sheet contains different pages that can be navigated by the tab on the right side of the character sheet itself. Fantasy Ground makes it really easy to access the right information as well as making rolls against it. You will find that this is a common theme throughout this application. For example, if I ask you to make a dexterity roll, just hover your cursor over the tiny die in the dexterity box on your character sheet. Click and drag your cursor to the chat window and it will make a roll for you adding any modifiers. The same goes for stuff like saving throws. Here we'll make a simple constitution save. Most everything can be dragged from your character sheet to make a roll. If we go to the action tab of Mr. Wizard, we will make a non-target attack against the air. As seen here, a critical roll is made, and you'll see two silhouettes of another roll of 2d6. This is happening because the system is automatically rolling on the crit chart as I have that option turned on. Normally, if you roll damage next, it will double the damage because of the crit roll. However, for some reason, I rolled another attack against the air, so it negated the double damage on the damage roll I just did. For spells, if you use it to attack, you will see it on this tab as well. There is a button to cast a spell. 
If Mr. Wizard would have something targeted at this point, Fantasy Grounds will know whether to roll an attack against the target or roll a saving throw against the spell. That depends on the spell you are using, but everything is made pretty simple here by the program itself. You will also note that next to certain line items, you will see a red dragon icon. If you click on this, it will bring up the information about that item from the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition source material. Since I bought the add-on, it makes it really easy for us to reference things without flipping through a book. Sometimes you have to add in a modifier to your roll, whether it be an attack roll or a damage roll or some other roll. This is done by adding the modifier in the modifier box at the bottom left side of your screen. This must be done before you make your roll. For example here, Mr. Wizard is attacking a stinky goblin, but for some reason he has a negative 5 to hit. Let's just say Mr. Wizard is drunk or something, just go with me here. You'll click the modifier box and type in negative 5 and then make your roll. Right now Mr. Wizard doesn't have the goblin targeted, so it's just a non-targeted attack, but you get the point. If you'll note, there are preset buttons next to the modifier box. Assuming you have an advantage or disadvantage to your next roll, you will click the boxes before making your roll. In this next roll, Mr. Wizard will have an advantage to attacking the goblin. As you can see, Fantasy Grounds will make two rolls of the 20-sided dice and select the highest dice roll because of the advantage roll. Remember to apply your modifiers before making a roll or you will piss me off and I will end you and you know I can do this. As we use the program more, we'll set up predefined modifiers in the modifier window so it'll make this task much easier for future games. Most of the time when I have to pull up a map for you to move around in, it may make a difference in what's going on in the game itself. Normally you have free movement with your character icon. This would be times when we're roleplaying out a scene in the tavern or what have you and we're just referencing the location of all the actors. However, in most cases, when we use a map, movement counts against time, for example, in combat. In this case, I will lock your character's token. When this happens, you will only be able to make suggested moves. This means you will plan your move on the map and not actually move your token. Once you have finished your planned movement, I will confirm it on my side. This is important for things like running over traps in the middle of your route, or, for example, while moving in combat, you get surprised on your way to your destination. Combat is made pretty easy with Fantasy Grounds. When we enter combat, I suggest opening up your character sheet to the Actions tab and pulling up the Combat Tracker. If you are a spellcaster, be sure you have the mode Set to Combat and Display Set to Action at the bottom of your action page for your spells. In this example, Mr. Wizard finds himself in a predicament with five goblins. When all pre-combat actions have been taken and the combat starts, I will pull up the map and place in all the actors. Usually at this moment, initiative is rolled for all the enemies. Then all PCs will make a simple roll on their initiative by dragging or double-clicking their initiative box. The combat tracker will set the order of attacks and we're on our way to glory and victory, but most likely in my case, your deaths and a pause in the game to roll up new characters. We'll go through three examples of attacks here. First, we'll go ahead and move all the goblins up. They won't reach Mr. Wizard in one turn anyways. Normally, the combat tracker will highlight the next actor's turn and then I would move the goblin one at a time, but to save time here, I'll just move them all at once and then cycle to Mr. Wizard's turn. For this turn's action, Mr. Wizard will stay put and cast an area effect spell, in this case, Fireball. If we take a quick look at the spell, it blasts a fireball to its destination and explodes in a 20 foot radius. We can easily figure this out by using the Fantasy Grounds pointer function. To access the pointers, right click on the map, select the pointers option and then select the circle. Then left click and hold down the area of the map where you want the destination point to be and drag it out until you reach the radius amount you want. In this case, 20 feet. Don't worry about not being precise because once you put down the circle, you can move it around. To do so, left click and hold down the center node of the template and move it around. In this example, we want to hit as many gobbies as we can. The three in front of Mr. Wizard seems to be the best option as we can't get as many on the two on the right. Once you figure out how many you can hit, you need to target them. First, make sure you're active. You know you're active if you see a highlight circle around your icon. If you aren't, click on your token. You can do this in a couple ways. We can hold down control and click on multiple targets one at a time. You can also click on the target icon at the top of the map and then drag your selection square around the three goblins. You know you have them targeted if you see a distance arrow pointing between your character and your targets. Or you can look at the combat tracker and it'll tell you who you're targeting. If you can't target the enemies, let me know as I have set up the encounter wrong. Once everything looks good, I will tell you to cast your spell. 
In this case, we're going to click on the casting button next to the fireball on your character sheet. You can do the drag and drop to chat thing, but this is easier. Since the spell is an auto hit, Fantasy Ground will roll saves for the gobbies. Once I describe what has happened, I will have you roll damage. In this case, Mr. Wizard killed Gobby 1 and 2, and Gobby 3 is dying. We'll move on to the next turn. And yes, 1 and 2 are dead, but in this example, I'm still moving him for some reason. Just deal with it. Normally, when an enemy dies, I'll take them off the screen, but let's just move on. In the next turn, I'm going to skip the Gobby's attacks because they're so overtaken by Mr. Wizard's good looks. However, Mr. Wizard ain't playing that game. He decides to throw a fireball in the Goblin's face. In this example, let's just say he can do it. Normally, Goblin 3 is in the way, but whatever. This is just to show you a single target example. First, Mr. Wizard target has changed, so he will untarget the previous Goblins by control clicking each or using the target selection to untarget them. Additionally, you can just click the target with the red slash button at the top of the map. I just love doing things the long way because I love to live dangerously. Whatever. Again, Mr. Wizard targets Gobby 4 and casts his Firebolt at it. This time, Fancy Ground rolls an attack roll as it's what the spell requires. Mr. Wizard hits, rolls his damage, and down goes Gobby 4. In the final example, Mr. Wizard will hit Gobby 3 with a melee attack. If you hover over your token, you will see the reach of who your character can hit with his weapon. Everything else is pretty much the same from here on out. We acquire your target, roll for hit, and if you hit, roll for damage. It's as simple as that. And that's it guys, uh, thank you for watching and for my players I'll see you out on the uh, tabletop or virtual tabletop in this case. And get some adventures in and for the rest of you guys, if you guys have more questions about fantasy grounds or role playing or what have you, uh, yeah. Just leave a comment or uh, question down below. That's it, guys. I'll talk to you later.